It is on the Windows phone and it's also on your Xbox console. And it's a place where I go to find games, purchase games for my Xbox on Windows, um, go through and try again. And I can man man manage my avatar, I can see my friends and family, see my achievements, and go and find all the things that I want to do. We might have lost our internet connection here, let me check. Looks like it's working. So Windows has always had a strong uh, background in graphics, and gaming has always been super important on the Windows device, and you can make really super highly rendered 3D <laughs> games with, with graphics. But we've also made it so Windows 8 is easy to create uh, casual games. So here's one you probably know. It's Cut the Rope by Zepto, Zepto Labs. And about a year ago, they wrote this game in HTML5. And it was last September, they took it, the HTML5 version of the game, and in a couple months, they turned it into a Windows 8 game. So it's really easy to take HTML5 games and turn them into full Windows apps. So I'm going to play it here for a second. So another application I like to use that's a really good metro style application is iClickBook. And it's just a beautiful app. It takes really a lot of advantage of the metro style application model. So here I am, I'm clicking a theme, I can see all these recipes, find out, and just browse through. And if I don't want to uh, slide through to find the one that I want, I can also just bring my thumb in a little bit and back a little bit, and it'll give me the full list of applications that I have running, and I can quickly choose the one that I want to go to, and just out of the list. Another fast and fluid motion that we have is to close an app. You don't really need to close apps in Windows 8, we'll talk about that a little later, but if you do want to close it, you just take your finger from the top, drag it down, and right off the screen. So here I am back in Start. And if you're like me, you have, you belong to a lot of different social networks. And you have friends that are in Facebook and Google in your exchange contact list. And we have a people app that brings together all the different things at all the different places. So right now I have Facebook and Windows Live already connected, but I could also do Twitter, Google, Exchange. And then all the people, my friends and coworkers, are all listed here. It makes it really easy for me. Or maybe I want it on the other side. I can pull it right back the other side. So I'm going to do that for you again. We're going to take the video off. I'm going to slide it out, dock it here on the side, make the video big, down, bring it over. It's really fast and fluid, that notion of fast and fluid. Down, back again. One of the nice things about this automatic snapping between two windows is that I don't have to manage the windows. They don't overlap on top of each other. And so when I do something like click a link, it's going to go right to Internet Explorer without have me having to manage where that went. A lot of times when I'm in Internet Explorer, I do like to send links to people. And today, you would use copy and paste. So you copy and paste your link, you bring up email, paste in the link, you type in the email, and there's a lot of steps between that. And what I really want to do is I just want to get this page to my friend, or this document to another application, and without all those steps in between. And so in Windows 8, we have a system-wide sharing concept. So I go up here, and I use the charms bar and go to share, and all the apps that I use are right here, and all the people that I've been emailing with in a frequently used place are right here. So apps don't need to know anything about each other in order for this to work. So I'm going to go um, press email for Shannon. It's going to automatically bring in that link. It's going to fill out her address, and right away, I can send something to her really quickly. She doesn't have a mouse and keyboard, so she did a picture password, which works great for a tablet like that. I have a keyboard, so I chose to just use a pin, 
I'm going to unlock using my pin, and I'm just going to start by showing you how easy it is to navigate around the start screen using, using the mouse. Now this works just as you would expect. I can grab the scroll bar and move it around. I can, use the, uh, I can use the wheel on the mouse to scroll around. I can use page up, page down, any of those things. It's exactly as you would expect. You might notice my computer right now looks probably like yours will after a couple weeks of using the consumer preview. I've got dozens of apps installed here, so the start screen has quite a bit of stuff on it, but it's really, really easy to navigate around here. Starting an app is exactly what you would expect. I'm just going to go click. We're going to start the weather app here. This is actually a really wonderful <coughs> metro style. It's very, very easy to do. Now, I started something like four or five apps here. Uh, obviously, we've got a multitasking operating system. One of the things that you might want to do is just switch between apps that you have running in the background. So watch how we're going to do this. I'm going to take the mouse and I'm going to move it to the top left corner. And just by clicking, I switch to my previous app that I had up, right? I can switch to the next one. See how easy this is? Just super fast and fluid. I can cycle through my apps, go back to the start screen, go back to the app I was at. It's all incredibly, incredibly easily. And just made these corners make it really, really easy to just move around the UI like that. Charm again and get right back to the desktop. But what makes this PC cool is 10 people could be using this PC at the same time. It's supporting over 100 fingers on touch. It's got a sub-pixel accuracy pen. It's 82-inch diagonal piece of optically bonded Gorilla Glass. That's the biggest one in the world. That title was held by Surface as recently as last year, Surface V2 at 40 inches. So you can see how quickly this is changing and how quickly you're going to see touch. You already see touch like this on television all the time. And one of the things that's so neat about this is there's no parallax because of the bonding. So there's really no gap between where my finger is and where I feel like the pixels are. So I actually feel like I'm moving this tile directly by hand. And that's what makes this all so natural. This is like